the most from getting the soul. As we all know, it's the Jewish people got out of Egypt, 3,224 years ago. And um, years ago. And they, uh, <laughs> 60 days after they got out of Egypt, they went and they received the Torah on Sinai. So we're now going to explain what exactly are we supposed to learn from this. The text for this, that was the foundation of the Jewish uh, religion, that was what they started doing with the camels. But it's a pretty fantastic story that the Jews got the Torah from God. If everybody saw God, everybody felt God, everybody experienced God. Can you open the window? Get up there. There you go. Everyone experienced God. A whole bunch of nations of people all heard God speak. But it says, cunning of cunning, they all it was face to face with God. It says the experience was so real. It was more real than anything that anybody had ever experienced in their life before. So it says that the first of all, all the sick people got healed. All the blind people could see. And the lame people could walk. But uh, when the actual revelation of, of the when God spoke, it says that the, the souls of the Jews jumped out of their bodies. Not from the sick, but from the souls that jumped out of their bodies. The revelation was so intense and real. It was a revelation of light. And that same revelation later was put into the Holy of Holies. So why? Why did they have to be such a big revelation? Why? Here we have a we go to read how many Jews are there? And what percentage of the Jews are actually even believe this whole story? And even those that believe it could have happened, how many are really affected by it? Like, okay, it's a historical event, historical event. It could be and you have these other religions that are founded by two people or three people, one person saying, you know, I had a revelation, or if God spoke to me, or I am God. And they have millions of followers, billions, right? You know, hundreds of millions of followers of the Jews. You know, with great difficulty, they have, you know, five million followers. How many people read these questions? You know, how many Jewish people are there? I'd say there's 20 million. Like how many Jews got killed? Six million Jews. You know how many people believe? How many practice that? There's a billion chances. A billion. So you got six million Jews got killed. That was what one third of the Jewish people. Those are the, the eighteen million. How many of those people were religious? How many people believed in God? How many of them? So there's a half of them. Maybe. It's a question nobody knows because they, they were killed. But still, the Jews were always. There were always Jews that were apostates and, and politicians and, you know, they were you know, reformed Jews, conservative Jews. These people just don't believe that ever, ever going to happen. But God gave the Torah to the, to the Jews. They don't believe it. They just don't believe it. So why, why did God have to do this whole thing and give the Torah to the Jews if it, if it didn't convince anybody anyway? And in the other religions, you have one guy who came to the Lord spoke to me and everybody believes him. They have these religions. The Muslims have like one and a half billion people who believe in their religion. How many of them? So what really happened back then in Mount Sinai? Why did God go through all this uh, trouble, if you want to call it, and put, put the Jews in Egypt and take the Jews out of Egypt, all these amazing miracles, give them the Torah, and speak to themselves, and they didn't wait. Even 40 days later, after they got the Torah, they worshiped the golden calf. So what's the point of this tremendous Earth-shaking, soul-shaking revelation. So we're going to go. Let's go. Bishai to this man with the help of God, or la hey Stephen, the or means the night before the fifth day of the month of Sivan, Erev Chag Shavuot, which is the day before the holiday of Shavuot. The holiday of Shavuot is the holiday when we celebrate the giving of the Torah. I am God, God. 
share that, which they give us with the hour in the earth and dry and the water to leave it. It's the name of the mind. Okay? COVID. Name of the mind. Where is this taking from? Anybody know? Take it from the mind. Where is it coming from? Now, this is the first of the Ten Commandments. The first of the Ten Commandments is, I am God that took you from the land of Egypt. In other words, believe in me. First of the Ten Commandments. I am God. It doesn't, doesn't say in a way of a commandment. It doesn't say, I believe that I am God. It took you out. It's just a little statement. I am God that took you out of Egypt. There are some that say that this is this is not a commandment. There's some that are Jewish. I'm saying, I mean Jewish, not non Jewish people or non religious people. There's some Jews that say that it's not a commandment. But generally speaking, 90. This is one of the Ten Commandments. I am God took you out of Egypt. And then the second commandment is don't believe in any other God. Don't have any, don't make anything else into God. I am God, your God. And also it says, by the way, it says singular. I am your God, singular. In Hebrew, there's a difference between you, singular, and you, plural. And in English, there's no difference between you, all of you, or you. But you is the same thing. Masculine, feminine, singular, plural. There's no difference in English. In English. But in Hebrew, there's a big difference. And here this is spoken in singular. I am God, your God. Singular. Rashi has one explanation. Why? But another explanation is that God spoke personally to every single Jew. And every Jew for all generations. All the souls that hadn't been born yet had to come in life. Each and every one individually. Okay, I am God, your God, that took you from the land of Egypt. Talk of that. In this sentence, who is Dibor <coughs> Rishon, the first commandment, Dibor, the commandment that is heaven. This sentence, who is Debo, reached on the first commandment, the Sarah has to be of the Ten Commandments. Debo means uh, utterances, speeches, words. As it says before, by Yadaber Elohim is called the Renele Lemoir. Daber. Another way of saying commandment. These are, this is one of the Ten Commandments. This is the first of the Ten Commandments. Litno, which was given in the Matan Torah, and Matan Torah, the Vav, on the sixth day, even of Sukkot. This was given La Akhre after a Dimu that preceded, that the Jews made first. Israel, the Jews, the Jews said first, Naaset, not the simple. My printing is not good. The printing of the book is good. And Naaseh, you will do Le Nishma to we will understand. Right? The Jews did this amazing thing. Moses said, Okay, I'm going to give you the Torah. God is going to give you the Torah. And the Jews said, Naaseh and Nishma will do it and will understand it. That's what the Jews did. They made the first. Naaseh, the word Naaseh, which means we will do before we will understand. Okay, so first of all, the Jews had to say Naaseh and Ishmael will do it and will understand it, and then God gave the Torah. <coughs> okay, we're going to understand what is this Naaseh and Ishmael. Have you ever heard of that? Naaseh and Ishmael? Because that's the reason that God gave the Torah to the Jews and not to the other nations. That God went around to all the other nations in the world. And he said, do you want to have the Torah? And all the other nations said, a logical question, a logical thing. What is this Torah? What is it? Right, what is it? What's written in it? That's what you want. You want the Torah. Tell me or not. Okay, so yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you, 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 you'd like to. Uh, it could, could be. But let's, you know, we don't want to obligate ourselves. Tell us what's written in the Torah. So to each and every nation, God told them exactly what they didn't want to hear. 
right? So it was one nation that they were seeing. God said, says in the Bible, and that's what you know, God said, not, not for us. Another nation that they were a bunch of murderers. It said, God said, don't murder. Our Bible says don't murder. No, no, don't murder. We've got, we got to murder. That's a murder. Another nation that they loved, uh, how do you say, sexual crimes. So God says, okay, no. Don't, you can't do sexual crimes. Ah, come on, we don't like that. Okay. The Jews said, we'll do it. We'll do it. And then we'll understand it. Give it to us, we'll do it first, whatever it says, and then we'll understand it. It could be that no matter what God said to the Jews, they would say, we don't want it. Even if God would have said, you know, the Shabbos, the that, nah, we don't want it. Right? Right? But the Jews were smart, and the Jews said, we'll do it, and we'll understand it. Why did they say such a thing? Because it came from the essence of the soul. That's the essence of the soul, is that he wants to be a servant of God. Every Jew wants to be a servant of God, without asking questions. And it says, the Jews said first, Nasa Nishma, we will do I don't understand. This is a very basic foundation of Judaism. Nasa Nishma. A person is known to He just wants to serve God. It doesn't make any difference whether he likes it or he doesn't like it. It's not an easy thing to do. It goes against human, the human nature. But that, that was, and the merit of that, that the Jews said Nasa, before Nishma, <coughs> is they got the Torah. Ubo, and there came. Malachi Ashore, the ministering angel, the Kashru, and tied. They tied. If you tie your shoes, Kashru, they tied the call to each Echad one to Israel of the Jewish people. Shnei to Ketarim, two crowns. Echad one, Keneged Nase, one corresponding to. Nase, we will do. Be'echad, <coughs> and one. Keneged, corresponding to Nishma, we will understand. When did the Jews do all this, you know, this Nase, the Nishma thing? When did they say Nase before Nishma? We will do, before, we'll understand. When did they do this? When was that? That was the Hamishi Bethina, on the fifth day of Shabbat. That was a very long session, as you said. Very long session. So what does it say? The Jews got the Torah on the sixth day of Shema. But they only got the Torah after they first, uh, they did something on the fifth day of Shema. The day before. What did they do on the fifth day of Shema? They said, Naaseh before Nishma. What does it mean, Naaseh before Nishma? Can you tell me? Right. First of all, they said, We'll do it, and then we'll understand it. No, no normal person does a thing like that. I mean, usually you say, how would you like to buy a, a Grimazone? What? Grimazone. What is it? Says, well, no. Want, want to buy it? A million dollars. What is it? Well, yeah, I mean, let me see what it is first. You know, well, first of all, uh, uh, let me see. just sign here on the contract. Just sign here, and it's yours. What's mine? Well, yeah, I want to know what it is. Uh, what's going on? So if you really trust the person, giving it to you. So then they say, okay, I'll, I'll agree to anything you say. I don't even want to read what it is. I'll do it. And then after that, I'll understand what it is. I'll understand what it is. But no normal person does it. You don't sign a contract unless you read something. Someone comes up to you and says, uh, Kobe, here, sign this contract and agree to do everything about it. Say, well, let me read it to you. No, just sign. I'm not signing, right? But if somebody comes up that you really trust and you really love that person, really believe in that person. He says, sign this contract and agree to do it. You look at the person and you say, let me read it. Should I read it first? Or should I read it? Okay. No. Just sign. You want to sign? Yeah. I'll do it. I'll do it and then I'll understand it. Just do it. Just, just sign and you'll understand that it's good. So a normal person says, let me read it. But if you really love the person, you, really, you say, okay, you know what? I'll sign. I'll sign and then I'll do it. Who, who does it? The Jews did that with God. Moshe came and said, listen, God's going to give you a Torah. What do you say? You want it or not? We'll do it and we'll understand it. When did they say this? We'll do and we'll understand. When did they do that? They did it on the fifth day of Shema. That was the preparation. The move on is brought comma to in many
more in discourses the Rabbeinu of our rabbis, the Shienu, our leaders. In other words, the rabbis of Chabad, the, the rebbe's of Chabad. Hashala, the question of Yeshua, which is known, the Gadol Yisrael of the great minds of Israel. What's the question that everybody has asked for generations? They've asked the same question. Hare, here's the question. Hare, behold, <coughs> Bria, the creation. Shamayim, the Oris, the heavens and the earth. Who is? Pella, miracle. Gadol Yoter, which is greater. Which is Mitzrayim from going out of Egypt. Period. What's going on over here? God is the creator of the universe. God put the Jews in Egypt. God made the Jews suffer for 210 years. Finally, God took the Jews out of Egypt. An incredible story. God took the Jews out of Egypt. All sorts of plagues he gave to them. He split the sea for the Jews. Revelations of godliness. Every Jew is like being in the Holy of Holies. Took them to Mount Sinai. Spoke to them. And here it is. Here's the big message. That God is going to give to the Jewish people. The whole world has been waiting for this. It was created for this minute. Right? What did God say? I'm God. I took you out of Egypt. The Jews would say, it's a, it's a, come on, I mean, that's a little bit, of course you're God. Took you out of Egypt. You know, what was the big, not only that, there's a bigger miracle that God took you and taking you out of Egypt. God, God could have said something even more amazing. A bigger miracle. What's a bigger miracle? I am God that creates Egypt. I create you. I create every second. Right, that's a bigger miracle. God taking the Jews out of Egypt was not such a big miracle, if you think about it. Right, if you think about it, it wasn't that big of a miracle. He put them in Egypt in the first place, and yeah. Right? It's like going up to somebody and you know, pinching the guy's cheek or something, just pinching it as hard as you can. And scream, ah! Let me go, let me go. You let him go. You see, aren't I a good person? Huh? I stopped pinching you. I, I took away your pain. So, yeah, but you made it in the first place. Come on, this is not nice. Says, yes, but I am the one who will remove your pain. You must be thankful to me all your life. God put the Jews into Egypt. He put them into Egypt, and then he took them out of Egypt. Who told him to put them in the sea of his place? Right? And we said, God didn't have to do all those miracles. The Egyptians could have said, you know what? We're adopting Arab Spring. We're adopting a new outlook on life, democracy. We're no longer going to be slave masters. We want equality and brotherhood and fraternity. And that's it. We're going to just let the Jews go. What's such a big deal about taking Jews out of Egypt? Such a big thing. What's a bigger miracle? A bigger miracle is that God creates everything. He creates everything from nothing. There, there's no comparison to that. That's a, a, a bigger favor. God is doing something. Right? He's creating us from absolutely nothing for no reason just from pure love. He's creating us. Oh, that's a good thing to say. It should have said, God should have said, I am God that is creating you. Do what I want. That's a big deal. But he didn't say that. He didn't say that. He said, I am God that took you out of Egypt. That's the first of the Ten Commandments. You know, the first of the Ten Commandments is the most powerful. The first is the most powerful. And they say even the first two commandments are even more powerful. The first two commandments con contain in them all the rest of the commandments of the whole Torah. So the, and the first one is even the most powerful. The first was Anochi, I am God. It's like God is saying, this is me, this is, the, this is it. Right? I don't know, so why does God say this small miracle about taking the Jews out of Egypt when he could have said the big miracle about creating the whole universe? I create Egypt, I create you. I'm creating you right now. Taking you out of Egypt is something I did in the past. But creating you is something I do every second. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't even be here. So why didn't God do that? That's the question that everybody asks. Okay? Mr. Smith, what is that? Haray behold. Yes. Af, even though. Okay, let's do the first one. Haray behold. Three at the creation. Shamayim, Vors of heavens and the earth. Who is Pella, a wonder. Gadol, more. A Pella, Gadol, great. Yoter, more. The Yetzirah of Mitzrayim and going out of Egypt. The Yetzirah of Mitzrayim and going out of Egypt. Af, even though. 
last word of life. Shahayu that there were. Kama many. Nisim miracles. Even though when they left Egypt there were a lot of miracles. Hari yod. No saf In addition to this. Shaim zeh. That this is not pure and explanation. Maspik sufficient. On this, the Omar that it says, quote, quote, Asher that, Hoseitiha, I took you out, Eretz Mitzrayim from the land of Egypt. Um, what we can say? Well, the reason God started the Ten Commandments was He did a lot of miracles. That's why. So that's not a good reason why. The cave and sin, the gam that also. Kodem before Yetziat Mitzrayim going out of Egypt. V'chein and similarly La'acharei after Yetziat Mitzrayim going out of Egypt. How you were Kama v'kama nisim many miracles. Before going out of Egypt there was also miracles. And after there was also miracles. The story with Abraham being put into a fiery furnace and Behold, Indian and May, the whole idea of what is a miracle. But what do you want to say? The reason that the Torah, that the Ten Commandments starts with I am God who took you out of Egypt is because God did a lot of miracles. When He took them out of Egypt, there were tremendous miracles. You say in, in, in the Seder night, right? How many wonderful things did God do to us? He took us out of Egypt and He gave us bread in the desert and He destroyed the Egyptians. He did all these amazing things. Right, said, okay, but it's true, there were a lot of amazing things, good, but there were amazing things that happened before going out of Egypt, right? And there were amazing things that happened in Egypt. How it was it that, that the Egyptians just didn't destroy all the Jews, or that the Jews didn't intermarry, or that the Jews didn't just commit suicide, or whatever they did. It was so terrible there for 210 years. Or Jews didn't lose their identity. Right, that's also a miracle. Going out of Egypt was a miracle. Yes, maybe there was a few more miracles. In general, what is the I think of a miracle? What is a miracle? He may behold. If you want to say the reason that the first of the Ten Commandments says that there were so many miracles, let's look and see what exactly the thing of a miracle is, and you'll see that it's not such a big thing. He may behold. In and amaze the whole idea of a miracle. Who is Shinui, a change? You have the place to see where we are? Akobi. First word of the line is Hayu. Last word of the line is Ba'orit. Torah. Right in the middle. What is a miracle? A miracle is Shinui, a changing Miyesh from one thing. Miyesh to another thing. What is a miracle? Think about it. All the miracles. Uh, think, just give me an example of, the mir- of a miracle from the Bible. What was a miracle? What's a miracle? Give me an example of one miracle that happened in the Bible. Can you give me an example? No, that's not one of the miracles of the Bible. What? Ten plagues. Ten plagues. Was, that was miracles, right? God took us out of Egypt with miracles. Splitting of the sea. Miracles. What happened when God, when God did this? What did he do with the ten plagues? God took the sea and he turned it into blood. Blood existed before. And water existed before. He just took water and made it into blood. Right? He took one thing and changed it into another thing. Right? It made frogs come out of the water. So the frogs, frogs existed before. He just made them multiply. Frogs, there was frog, frogs everywhere. Right? There was lice. There were boils. All these things are things that existed before, but God just made them occur in Egypt. Just made them occur in Egypt. The hail that had fire inside of it when it came down. Hail existed before. Fire existed before. Splitting of the of the of the Yam Suf. Splitting of the sea. Where God God changed the sea into dry land. Dry land existed before. He made the sea into a wall. Walls existed before him. He just made the seas are generally not walls. So God changed the sea into a wall. But he made one thing into another thing. That's miracles. That's what happens when there are miracles. 
angels to come down from heaven. Angels were there before, and angels come down. Because miracles are always taking one thing and making it into another thing. But creating heavens and the earth, creating the last word in the line is Moritz, creating of the heaven and the earth, who is, yea, something, the I am, from nothing. Creating of the heavens and the earth is something from nothing. Now this is not, cannot possibly be done. Even more, the Rambam says that all of the miracles that Moses did in, in Egypt did not prove the existence of God. They weren't done in order to prove to the Jews that God exists. You hear me? I told you. Why? Because the Rambam says it could be that even a sorcerer or a magician could have done the same mir- thing, miracle. Could have done the same thing. So it says that they couldn't do because sorcerers can't rule over anything that's too small. So there's a, there's a regular sorcerers, but it's a person, Moses was, just, Moses was just a bigger sorcerer than they were. Right? They couldn't rule, they couldn't create things that were be, be smaller than the size of a, what it was, a bean or something. And then Moses was able to do that, so he was a better sorcerer. But it didn't show that God did it. Bringing bread from heaven, splitting of the sea, these things did not prove his existence. All they did was prove that Moses was a very great and powerful person, and he had tremendous powers. He had tremendous powers. But a person looks at him and says, he's got powers. Maybe I have more powers. Right? Like some people, they look at, they, they have their leaders, Jewish leaders. And they say, you know, this man is a tremendous genius, but, you know, because he was gifted, he has a lot of, but I hope my children will be leaders like that. Will be great. It's very nice. But with the Rebbe, it's not like that. Nobody says, oh, I hope my son will be the Rebbe. It's a totally different different type of a thing. The same thing. People look at Moses and they could say, Moses is a person. He's a great person, a smart person, a talented person, a powerful person. A but it's a person. Right? To feel that Moses is somehow other connected to God more than anywhere else, nobody connected with that. When do they connect Moses with God? When? It says, <coughs> After he took things out of Egypt, everybody saw God at, my, at, uh, at uh, the splitting of the sea. But even more so when God gave the Torah. When God gave the Torah, that's when people really started to believe in God. It didn't last very long, though. But when Moses was gone, everybody stopped believing in God. They all worshipped idols. <clears throat> but nevertheless, what are we saying? Miracles don't provide the answer. Right? Miracles, because miracles are just changing one thing to another thing. I, I am God that took you out of Egypt was a miracle. It was a miracle. Even a, a, something which is totally not even in the category of a miracle is God creating the heavens and the earth. God creating the heavens and the earth is not considered to be a miracle. Why? It's too much. It's too great. Right? A miracle is something happens, everything else stays the same, and this Changes. This is a miracle, right? God all of a sudden took me out. I was surrounded by enemies, and all of a sudden I just found myself, right, in another country. Oh, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. A person was terribly sick, and suddenly he finds himself well. That's a miracle. Right? A person is a miracle. But then everything changes. You know, you're being created by God, everything. It's not a miracle. Right? A miracle has to be within a certain context, right? Everything else is nature, and this one thing changes. But to say that everything is being created by God all the time is not a normal miracle. You can't compare it to anything. Okay, Mr. Smith. You understand? You, get, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Creation of the heavens and the earth in, a, in, a, in one way is not a miracle. It's, a, it's something from nothing. It's above, because we have no idea what nothing is. Nobody knows what is nothing. So we're saying, God, that's how God should have started the Torah, huh? Nothing is not space. Space is a creation. Space is something. A vacuum is something. Right? Emptiness is something. It's a thing. It's a, got a name. Nothing means no space, no consciousness, no time, no spirit, no s- nothing. God created the heavens and the earth. Maybe he created all the spiritual world. He created the space. Space is a creation. So what does it mean? Nothing. God created. 
have no idea what is now. We have no comprehension. Well, God is creating the world something from nothing. Ah, that's a pretty big miracle, huh? Says, I'm sorry, it doesn't impress me. You know, I, I don't know what you mean. He created the world something from nothing. It doesn't make it. Okay? If you want to say God is creating that refrigerator from nothing, right? And you go and you put your hand in the fridge and you say, wow, it's nothing. God, how is this thing exist? Where is it coming from? But there must be a, a movie camera or a, a laser beams or something that's keeping it going. This is thing just nothing. Wow, this is a myth. Yeah, oh, then you can see. Right? Then you can see. But to say that everything is being created nothing, that's a miracle. That's greater than a miracle. If so, God should have started the, the Ten Commandments. He took up the whole world. He took the Jews out of Egypt. He rid everything with creation. He should have said, that's it. Guys, I am God that creates everything. That would have been the first commandment. That's the commandment. But God didn't say that. God said, I am God who took you out of Egypt. Why? Bria Shemayim Oris, the creation of heaven and the earth, who is Yesh Mi'ayim, is something from nothing. Sorry, the country is somewhat good. The notes of Lazen, in addition to this, this is no stop. Should be a part. You see where we are? You have it? It's called it. First word of line is who? Who? Yesh Mi'ayim. The notes of, in addition, is that to this, Shabriyat, that the creation, Yesh Mi'ayim, something from nothing. Who is Pele? <coughs> Pele is a, is a wonder, Gadol Yoter, that is greater, greater creation of the heavens and the earth. It's a greater miracle than taking the Jews out of Egypt. He may behold, 